Hello students. Welcome to Teach You Smart. Let's continue our journey through rational numbers. Today, we are going to learn a new topic, the commutative property. Let's start with the commutative property for whole numbers. First, let us look at addition through an example. All of us like candles because they give us light. Here, we have two packets of candles. The first packet contains 10 candles and the second packet contains six candles. If we take six candles from the second packet and put them to the first packet, how many candles will be there in the first packet? The answer is, it is 10 candles plus six candles equals 16 candles. Instead, if we take 10 candles from the first packet and add them to the second packet, how many candles will be there in the second packet? Here also, the total number of candles in the second packet would be 6 candles plus 10 candles equals 16 candles. Here, in both cases, we can see the total number of candles is the same, irrespective of the order. We can write it as 10 plus 6 equals 16 equals 6 plus 10 or 10 plus 6 equals 6 plus 10. We can see that changing the order of numbers does not affect the result. This property is called the commutative property. That is, the commutative property is a mathematical property which states that changing the order of the operands does not affect the result of the operation. Here the numbers 10 and 6 are two whole numbers, and if adding 10 and 6, or 6 and 10, the result is always 16. Generally, we can say that for any two whole numbers, a and b, a plus b equals b plus a. That is, addition is commutative for whole numbers. Now, let's examine if the commutative property holds true for subtraction. If we take six candles out from the packet of 10 candles, then how many candles will be left there? Only four candles will be left. That is 10 candles minus six candles equals four candles. Is it possible to remove 10 candles from six candles? No, it's impossible. We have a deficit of four candles. Mathematically, we can express it as six minus 10 equals minus four. Here, we can see 10 minus six is not equal to six minus 10. That is, subtraction is not commutative for whole numbers. Next, let's look at multiplication. We have a total of 16 candles. Let us arrange those in rows and columns. First, let's arrange the 16 candles in two rows of eight. We can verify that total number of candles is two multiplied by eight equals 16 candles. What if we arrange these candles in eight rows of two candles each. Again, and the total number of candles is 8 multiplied by 2 equals 16 candles. That is, 2 multiplied by 8 is equal to 16 and 8 multiplied by 2 equal to 16. Or 2 multiplied by 8 equals 8 multiplied by 2 equal to 16. So for any two whole numbers, A and B, a multiplied by B equals B multiplied by A. That is, multiplication is commutative for whole numbers. Lastly, let's look at the division. If we distribute these 16 candles equally among four people, then how many candles will each person get? Here, each person will get four candles, that is, 16 divided by 4, 
equals 4 candles. Suppose there are 16 people and only 4 candles. Then how can we distribute the candles equally? In this case, we have to distribute 4 candles among 16 people equally in order to do this. We have to break the 4 candles into 16 equal pieces and each person will get 1 by 4th of a candle. Mathematically, we can represent it as 4 divided by 16 equals 4 by 16 equals 1 by 4. Here, the two situations have yielded two different results. That is, 16 divided by 4 is not equal to 4 divided by 16. Hence, the division is not commutative for whole numbers. Let's recall what we discussed today. Whole numbers are commutative for addition and multiplication, but not commutative for subtraction and division. Before winding up, let's check how much you understood by doing an activity. Verify the commutative property for addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division for A equals 253 and B equals 759. That's all for now. See you all in the next class.